Alright, so today's session is brought to you by Emerald Financial Group. Emerald exists to help investors make informed decisions about their investments. We offer a range of services to help educate, support and motivate everyday people to get involved in the stock market. We offer services for any experience level. Uh, just look at the link uh, in the description below. Uh, you'll get a bit more information about us, who we are and what we're about. But let's get straight into it. So today, once again, I have Sam Green here with me. Thanks for coming on, Sam. You're welcome. Um, I work very closely with Sam on portfolios and our equities research site. Uh, he's a very experienced stock picker and a derivatives trader as well. All right, so look, over the last week, guys, you know what we've seen is a revived enthusiasm towards recovery stocks, okay? Um, there's a lot going on in the US and locally that's driven this, so let's talk about that a bit more today. Um, so Sammy, you know, what do you put this down to? What, what's your reasoning for this move back to the recovery space? Well, it's a very good question. And to be honest, you know, it's, it's the recovery itself, uh, you know, Global GDP this year is, is forecast to bounce back strongly. We're seeing quarterly growth bounce back in, in most Western nations, uh, you know, here and in the US most importantly. Um, and, you know, expectations of, you know, large amounts of vaccinated people, that's going to allow people to start traveling around again. And, you know, it'll further the, the sort of um, recovery. I mean, in the US already, they've, they've vaccinated about 3% of the population. Yeah. Uh, which is incredible, you know, that's, that's 3 million people roughly and um, done in a, a very, very short period of time. So the economic recovery itself is, is driving the desire for a lot of the stocks that will benefit from it. Yep, so your vaccines um, and then obviously with all that stimulus being splashed around, we expect a pretty quick recovery once you know they get a better COVID normal, maybe similar to what we're seeing. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot more money in people's pockets than people were expecting, you know, even 11 months ago. Um, there's a whole, uh, over $100 billion of additional savings that Australians squirreled, squirreled away during the virus. Uh, and yeah, there's, there's, you know, a lot of uh, fiscal stimulus in the US that are going directly to uh, individuals through the stimulus checks. And that's money that, in large part, people are going to spend. Um, and that is driving demand for, for certain stocks and you know, the, there's a lot of stocks that are benefiting in an indirect manner as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we've been talking about this in the office for quite some time now. Even late last year, we we're talking about and trying to forecast into this year. And, you know, we're very optimistic about the Australian market here. Um, you know, we think the residential housing market's going to boom again, especially after the RBA was so accommodative a couple of weeks ago. Um, so look, it's all playing out as we were kind of expecting it to, which is fantastic. So you know, now we just want to take the opportunity to share with you guys that are watching in. Uh, you know, you know why you know, we've shown you why we're optimistic around the recovery stocks, uh, but also a couple of shares that we're interested in right now in that recovery space. And we're going to go through uh, a couple of Sammy's favourite stocks, and one of them also my favourite stock in the market at the moment. So, Sammy, do you want to share those couple of stocks with us, For and sure. why are you so optimistic about them? For sure. So uh, we'll start with, I guess, uh, Fortescue Metals Group. Uh, it's not a very controversial call. It has enjoyed. You know, nearly 300% gains in the past 24 months, uh, and I think it's a stock that uh, you know most analysts, most brokers will be quite positive on. Uh, but that I don't think that's always been the case. In fact, for a lot of that 24 months, the average analyst price target was quite uh, lagging the uh, the share price of Fortescue, and uh, they they were and they still are forecasting lower iron ore prices, and we'll touch on that in a minute. Uh, and then the second one that that I've um, you know, wanted to discuss today is ARB. ARB, who manufactures uh, accessories and, and uh, other add-ons for four-wheel drives, mm -hmm. predominantly. Uh, and I think that they could be a big, big winner in a, in a sort of uh, recovery trade. Yeah, absolutely. So Fortescue being maybe a, a value play, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Let's, let's dig into Fortescue a bit more. Absolutely. So... You know, predominantly the rally has been driven by the bounce in iron ore prices. Uh, you know, gone are the days of 50, 60 US a ton for iron ore. That's, you know, four years ago now, three, three years ago. We've had iron ore prices, you know, trend up to $160 a ton now um, for 62% dry metric ton of iron ore. And that is, you know, you know, two to three times what analysts were predicting them to be at this point. 
Those analysts, you know, have been forecasting lower prices for multiple years. Uh, they've been consistently wrong over that period. They're still forecasting that they'll come down and they will come down eventually. But as long as those iron ore prices don't come down, we should see Fortescue keep rising, even if prices hold their level. There's a few reasons why they've jumped, predominantly uh, Vale, who was the biggest producer. They've had a lot of issues in their native Brazil. A lot of their mines have been shut down there and their production has dropped. Uh, also, you know, there's been strong demand, strong demand from Chinese mills, increasing demand from other parts of the world. Uh, and we think that uh, global stimulus play, you know, uh, government spending, looking to upgrade outdated infrastructure, there's going to be consistent strong demand for steel moving forward. Yes, uh, I do think there's a chance we see more iron ore supply come online. Uh, and yes, that may impact prices uh, a bit in, in 2021-2022. At the same time, we think demand will remain resilient uh, and, you know, we, we don't see iron ore coming off too much, certainly not down to the sort of 60 to 70 US a ton that uh, many are expecting, at least not in the next 12 months. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, we've been long Fortescue for a long time. It's been one of our emerald recommendations. I think we're up extremely strongly on that. We're anticipating a very, very large dividend come February. Uh, some analysts are predicting up to a dollar forty per share. You know, if they do that and then repeat it in August, you're looking at a two dollar eighty dividend on a twenty four dollar stock. You know, eleven percent before franking, and we would expect it to be fully franked. So, uh, we think it's criminally cheap still, uh, as long as iron ore prices hold up. Yeah. Um, this is actually one that uh, tops our scoring list. Uh, it has done for some time. Our quantitative models identify Fortescue as a very attractive investment target. It scores well on pretty much every front, I believe, uh, except for price momentum because there has been a little bit of selling recently. So uh, price momentum being the only score that it doesn't uh, sit, you know, in, in the sort of 90 plus percentile range. Yeah. And um, it's been a really good predictor for us, our scoring on Fortescue over the past 12 months or so, because as you saw, Everyone saw the massive pullback on the back of COVID. Uh, well, our scoring didn't shift from 99 out of 100 through that period. It might have gone down to 97 at, at, at most. And that was one of the best performing stocks through last year. So it's been a great precursor to our scoring on Fortescue. It's worked really, really well for us. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a big backer of Fortescue as well. I've been trading that quite a bit through last year and this year and mm -hmm. yeah still think there's plenty of upside to come absolutely absolutely so again it is a bit predicated on iron ore prices but i think you know rumors of its impending demise have been greatly exaggerated yeah i also saw uh city group came out and they upgraded their forecast on iron ore as well and expecting it to stay i think it was above maybe 130 through most of uh the end of this year too which is Pretty, pretty phenomenal because a lot of the other analysts were predicting it to come back to below 100. Mm. So I think we're going to start seeing more and more of these analysts revise iron ore higher over the next 12 months. Yep, would not be surprised at all. All right, so that's Fortescue. You know why we love Fortescue and we'll keep banging the drums about that stock. But let's talk about a bit more about ARB. It's something that hasn't really come across my radar too much, but uh, Sam's likes that one let's go through it yeah so this is another one that was picked up by our scoring uh, during the virus period it actually did sell down fairly heavily uh, during the initial virus period and um, that led to a fairly low uh, all weather score on our quantitative models uh, that all weather score looks at uh, you know price stability low volatility um, and you know basically trading uh, near its its yearly highs near its high levels uh, and so it did take a bit of a hit from the all weather score. However, all the other scores really held up. Um, and that sort of tells us that, you know, this stock may be being sold down a bit unfairly. Uh, fast forward to, you know, uh, November, December, they came out with a really, uh, really bullish update and basically said, you know, revenues were going to be up 21% for this half. Um, and yeah, you know, the share prices jumped further again. Uh, we think there's a, a chance for our performance on the profit side of things from what analysts expect. Uh, and, you know, we're anticipating a pretty good report at the end of February. Um, ARB, you know, it, it probably seen uh, the bull bars or, you know, the trays or the canopies, things like that on four wheel drives. 
uh, that really goes into the domestic Australian recovery story for us. So, you know, as we said, there was a lot of savings squirreled away during the virus period. That's now being spent. You know, people who have savings, Australians traditionally like to travel. We can't travel overseas at the moment because of COVID. So there's plenty of people out there looking at a domestic holiday, going for driving, going camping, you know, um, taking the car out for a ride and, and upgrading, you know, some of the parts on it. And we think that's driving strong demand for ARB's products. Uh, and so that's another one we're, we're really happy to suggest to people at the moment. It is a bit high in price right at this point because it has rallied so hard over the past few months. Um, but, you know, still, still a fantastic stock still scores very well and still, you know, a, a, a strong chance for an outperformance at the end of the month. Yeah, so ARB will be more of your growth buy, okay, if you're expecting further growth. And look, as Sam said, uh, you know, you can't travel anywhere at the moment, so a lot of people are, you know, uh, full driving, getting caravans. I've noticed even in my street at the moment, uh, driving down, uh, there's multiple caravans that have just popped up out of nowhere. Uh, so you can start starting to see a lot of people get set up, ready to, you know, do, do the more strain trip. Uh, so look, yeah, ARB is not just in Australia, it's New Zealand and yep, no, overseas. You know, it's overseas as well. So. The US, the Middle East, but, uh, you know, Australia being a, a big part of their business. And, you know, th those other countries, a lot of them, they can't travel either. Um, and similarly, you know, we'd expect strong demand there as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, just a little bit more about our scoring, guys. So, you know, we score stocks on, you know, uh, roughly, uh, I think it's eight different levels and then get, get a combined score on that. We use these scorings as a bit of a screening tool. It gives us the ability to screen through the Australian stock market and find stocks that are likely to outperform. Uh, from there, we do a deeper research before we actually go out and, you know, suggest any of these particular stocks as a recommendation service in our equity platform. Uh, so just to give you, give you a bit of an idea, idea on how we go about things um, but I think that's about it we'll probably wrap things up there Sam unless you've got something else to talk so, about no I think uh, I think that's a good point to end it um, you know anecdotally from the recovery story apparently uh, you know boat retailers are sold out of boats caravans are, are selling like hotcakes so we do like you know the domestic Australian travel recovery story Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. So if you want to know anything more about us, there's links in the description below. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and like our video. We want to get this around to as many people as we can. Uh, thanks for jumping on and bye for now. Bye guys.